So hello everyone, my name is Marjorie de Clare and I'm going to present part of the second project, which is entitled uh, Deriving Dust Mass and Temperature in Distant Star Forming Galaxies with Dust M. Uh, so the supervisors of this project are Nathalie Izar, Karim de Mieck, Jean-Philippe Bernard and Longi Bing. So we want to thank them for uh, their assistance with this project. And the people who worked on this are uh, Anna Carolina Posses, Antonio Pensabene, myself, Fernanda Roman de Oliveira and Evangelos Paspaliaris. Uh, so we split the project into two parts. Uh, I'm going to present the first part and then Fernanda will take over for the second part. Um, so I'm briefly going to introduce DustM. Uh, DustM is a numerical tool to compute the extinction, emission and polarization of interstellar dust grains heated by photons. The code is written in Fortran 95 and it has been developed by these two French institutes, IAS and IRAP. Um, the code was designed or is designed in a way that you can easily change and mix different dust properties. And it was originally um, developed to work with the dust grain model of Compiègne et al. 2011. So that's also the reference paper uh, if you, uh, for DustM if you want to learn more about it. But now it also includes other dust grain models, as I will show you in a minute. And the code is public and can be downloaded from this website. So the goals of our part of the project were twofold. The first one is to test the influence of different parameters on the dust spectral energy distribution and extinction curve. And uh, the parameters that we played with are the intensity of the interstellar radiation field, the color of the radiation field, or the temperature if you want, and the size distribution of the dust grains. And then we also compared different dust grain models, um, including the Compiègne et al. 2011, the Temis model, and the Drain and Lee 2007 model. And of course, I don't have time to show you uh, everything it and all the results, but I'm just going to focus on two things. Um, so the first thing shows what happens uh, when you increase the intensity of the interstellar radiation field. So basically, this means that you have more photons, so the dust grains can absorb more energy. And as a consequence, they will also emit more energy. So the spectral energy distribution of the dust grains will shift upwards. And then we also noticed that the larger grains, which make up the bulk material of the dust, um, will heat up. And so the peak of their emission will shift to shorter wavelengths. But this does not happen for the smaller grains, which behave as uh, molecules and which will just uh, emit at specific wavelengths. And then the second thing I want to show you is that different dust models um, have different uh, dust SEDs. So you can see several differences. Uh, but I just want to highlight one thing, which is the different slopes at long wavelengths. And um, this is because the different models use different dust emissivities, and this will have an influence on the dust mass that you derive from the dust model. So um, using different models, you can get different answers. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Fernanda. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie. Uh, now we'll talk about the other part of our project, which was uh, me and Evangelist were fitting SEDs to two high redshift galaxies. And for that, we need to use the Dustin wrapper, which is an interface in IDL or GDL uh, to run DustM to fit SEDs to the dust emissivity with a chi-square minimization. This can be used both with photometry and spectroscopy. However, uh, do take with a grain of salt because uh, the radiation field that we assume is not appropriate for a whole galaxy. But we, we tried anyway. Uh, one thing that we had to change in the code was uh, we have to shift the spectra to the frequency um, to fit the frequency of the emissivity of the dust because these uh, galaxies are high redshift. So here on the side, you can see uh, a fit, uh, the blue data points are photometry and the black is the fitted spectrum, uh, the fitted SCD. And you can see also these squares, these are the expectation of the model for the photometric band as well. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So here's one of the galaxies that we fitted. Uh, this is a redshift 1.22 and here on the side is pretty much what I showed before. So the blue points are the photometry, but we also have a spectra for this galaxy, uh, which is shown in gray in the back. And the different, uh, so the black is the full uh, SED, but you can also see the different components of the dust. So we have many different components uh, of the black body emissivity of the small uh, dust grains. And we also have this blue, which is the ionized pH component. Uh, you can go to the next slide. And for this galaxy that it's a redshift 2.49, you can see the same thing. But for this galaxy, it preferred um, neutral pH component, which is the pink one. 
Another thing that I would like to show in the next slide is, is this, that we, we tried the stem, uh, the wrapper with both with the photometry and with the spectra together. So we can see that both of them retrieve um, an SED that's pretty good. Of course, with the spectrum, it's better in some points, uh, but it, the, this thing does a good job without the spectrum as well. So now I'll leave you with uh, the summary and we can answer questions. Thank you. So are there any questions? So I don't see any in the Slack. So for the last part, uh, when you fit the detailed uh, spectra, did you uh, also vary the charge of the pH? Sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't yes. hear it. When you fitted the detailed uh, mid-infrared spectrum, did you play on the charge of the pH? Uh, no, we did try different models. Uh, because they, 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 uh, the, the SED depends a little bit on the model that we choose. Uh, uh, this one, I think it's the Compiègne. Okay. And there is a question in the chat. Uh, which grain size distribution has been used? And does different distribution affect uh, the results significantly? Is that for the fitting or just in general? It's, um, I mean, it's not precise, so you can answer it the way you want. Okay. Um, so we have, one of the things that we also did is play around with the different dust grain sizes and um, that, that will influence um, the shape of the SED because larger grains will emit more at longer wavelengths and smaller grains will emit more uh, at shorter wavelengths. Um, I don't, I'm, I forgot the second part of the question, sorry. I mean, it was a uh, uh, different distribution, so different size distribution affects significantly the result. Yeah, so uh, we also played a bit with the size distribution. For example, for the lock normal, you can shift uh, the central wavelengths if you use a lock normal size distribution, and that will also um, have an influence on the SCD. Um, but yeah, we didn't show the plots in, in, the, in the presentation. Mm -hmm. And the last question, do you find any particular relation between grain size or comp composition and emissivity? Yes, so I guess that's, that's what I just said. So the larger the grains, the more, um, the more emission at longer wavelengths and a bit because they are cooler basically and the smaller grains are hotter. So it's, it's a temperature dependence and they will emit more at shorter wavelengths. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you.